When I was a young composer, just starting out, I received some advice from a past music teacher. That advice was, don't compose music. What? And this wasn't just some general advice, this was advice targeted at me and the portfolio that they had seen. Ah, oh, right? Like, uh, it hurt. A devastating comment. And today, on Piano Day, I want to share that story because there's more to it than meets the eye. And hopefully along the way, I'll answer a question that I get all the time. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're kicking off a new series called Ask Your Lecturer, because I, as a music lecturer, get a lot of questions from my students, and hopefully, I can share a few of them here that you might be interested in. If you have something you wish you could ask your music lecturer, pop it in the comments below, subscribe so you get updated, and let's see what we can do. So, when students start out in composition, particularly when working in the door, but also when working with notation, one question comes up a lot more than others, which is, do I need to know how to play the piano to be a successful composer or producer? So straight away, you might be thinking, of course not, problem solved, next video. But there is more to it than that. If you check out any music college, any music school, any classroom that music is taught in, you will see the piano. You will see potentially posters with the piano keys labeled. It's something that's there in the everyday. And understanding that changes the way that we view music in Western culture. So. Do you need to know how to play it? All right, so before I answer that, let me just share this story of how I got this terrible, soul-crushing advice. So over a decade ago, I was applying for music college and I wanted to go to the CON, which is the Music Conservatorium. I wanted to study composition. It's always been a passion of mine. Writing music has always felt more rewarding than performing someone else's. I was deeply passionate about it. I was deeply motivated. I really wanted to make a go of this. So I thought, why not share my portfolio with a previous music teacher and just see what they make of it. Maybe get some advice and see if it's good enough for the con. So I met up with them and they flicked through my portfolio and then they looked at me and said this, you can't compose music not until you know how to play the piano. This was like watching my dreams be crushed right in front of me. The conversation continued. I honestly don't remember much of it. It was mostly them just flicking through, pulling out examples of why their point was important. And me just sitting there letting it wash over me as I realized that uh, I might not be able to get in. After the meeting, I left, I went home. I sat there for what felt like an eternity. And then I got up and I completely ignored the advice. And I am so glad I did. So today I continue to write music. I love to write film and media scores, rock bands and chamber orchestras, whatever, everything in between. And the thing that gives me the most amount of joy is I actually teach music. I teach the next generation of songwriters, composers and producers. I try to make sure that they never give up on their dream, that they never get this kind of advice from myself or anyone else. And if they do, to know when to ignore it. So obviously, right, you're, you're probably picking up how I feel about it. But over the years, I have thought a little bit more about the advice. Is it an essential skill for a composer? Is it something you should spend time on? Is it something you should learn first before you write music? I've thought about this a lot over the years, trying to understand what they really meant. And I think I can see a little bit of their point of view. A lot of where this argument comes from, the need to know piano in order to compose music, it really comes down to harmony and understanding harmony and being able to develop and convey your ideas as a musician. Not just a musician, but as a composer. Obviously the piano is a polyphonic instrument. It can play harmonies, counterpoint melodies, the main melody all at once if you want it to. It's something that allows you to see the relationship between the melody and the harmony. You can see the chords progressing as you move through the piece. It allows visual, tactile feel. Just take a look at this synth, right? You can see where the keys are. You start to understand where the notes sit on that keyboard. And you know, for example, when you play C, E, and G, you can see that that's a triad. You start to understand it in a more visual kind of way. Not just that, but these sorts of things are everywhere in music. You can't walk into a studio without seeing a keyboard, right? 
There's a keyboard usually connected to the computer. There's usually a piano somewhere in the room of a music class. There are diagrams of how the notes are laid out. Often when you're learning key, scale, it's all based off a piano. It's very much a universal instrument in the Western tradition. It's something that's just a mainstay in most educational situations. And of course, we haven't even spoken about controlling the door, the digital audio workstation. Most of the time, the way that you're recording these parts, these compositions, these ideas into the door is via a keyboard. Of course, there are other methods, pads, that sort of thing. That's definitely a thing. But how convenient is it just to be able to sit in front of a piano, hit record on the computer, and just play a few notes in. So with all of this musical knowledge, education, tools, and technology revolving around the piano, these sorts of things can lead you to believe that piano is the only instrument you can really learn as a composer or a producer. If your music education was anything like mine, you know that there are those teachers out there. You want to compose? Go sit at the piano. Sit there at the piano and write something. They were out there, right? Like that just seems to be the default way that somehow you're better if you can just sit in front of a piano, twinkle a few notes, write it down, and just imagine it in your head. And that sort of leads me into my main point. With all of this technology, there's not really a need to know how to play piano anymore. It's not like the piano is the only way you'll be able to hear the harmony in your track. It's not like the piano is the only way that you can hear the melody even. With digital audio workstations or doors, with notation software, you can now input your composition via keyboard or just by drawing it in with MIDI or using a different type of controller. There are keyboards out there, but there are also guitars that have MIDI output, wind instruments that have MIDI output. Your simple humble pads can definitely do it. The need to play piano does not, does not exclude you from writing music. Will it help? Look, I'll be honest, probably. It's much easier when you can just sit in front of a computer and record in a few lines by playing the piano, particularly when your college or your home studio might have a keyboard at the ready. I mean, take a look behind me. Like literally I've got, I'm surrounded by keyboard devices. Practically every synth has keys, right? Learning how to play piano is definitely gonna help you. That's not something you can shy away from. However, don't feel like you can't write music because you can't play piano wind controllers, MIDI guitars. You can even learn your music theory, harmony skills via gamified apps. The technology is out there to learn these skills. You as a composer, your role is to write a beautiful, emotive piece of music. Something that either gets you up and uplifting or sad or emotive or tragic or dramatic or tense, whatever it might be. The primary goal of you as a composer or producer is to write music that's meaningful to you and the people you wanna share it with. Nothing can stop you from that. So, should you learn piano? Maybe, maybe it's right for you. Do you need to? No. But hey, if you want to, now is a great time. Let Piano Day be the start of your piano adventure. Over the last couple of months, I've been trying to get back to my piano skills. It's been, it's, it's been hairy. It takes a while to learn something like this. Most of the time you just sit in front of the piano just freezing up, wondering how to kind of move your fingers in the right way or whatever. Like it takes some time, right? You have to dedicate, you know, give yourself five, 10 minutes a day at least to sit down and just play a little bit of piano. However, the benefits it gives you, one day that might pay off. So maybe this is the day that you start to play piano, but it's certainly not the day you give up on composition. Until next time, catch you later.